Tip number one, creating a gray background. We start with, from black and quickly link red to green and red to blue. So, but, so we click on red and drag and drop onto red and blue, onto green and blue. Now these three sliders are connected. So we can create a gray background of any value really quick. Tip number two, any DS view can be enlarged by pressing F12 on the keyboard. So uh, record viewer, can be enlarged to F12. Using F12, we have both record and uh, source monitors, but we can also have only one. Timeline can be blown up the same way. And really, anything in the uh, DS. Tip number three, applying audio tones really quickly onto uh, any number of audio tracks. So typically, head format, you'll have bars. And let's generate some bars. And uh, then what you would do is, uh, you know, you would mark an area between in and out and um, go to generate, I'm sorry, go to audio effects, tone generator, do the same thing on the next track, audio effects, tone generator. But So if you have a lot of tracks, you know, if you have 12 tracks, it takes a while to do that. Real quick way to do it is you make sure that the bar's video clip is deselected by holding control and clicking on it. And while we have the in and out marked, click on the select marked region, which will select everything. And if we choose tone, tone generator now, it will get applied to all the tracks, between, perfectly lined up with the in and out. Tip number four, you can customize all the timecode readouts underneath the source and record viewer. So if I right click on the letter I here. I have different options I can choose from and we have the, those same options for all four of these uh, readouts. So for example I can select uh, loop in and loop out indicators instead of in and out and instead of duration I can select loop duration. So if I want to loop exactly two seconds we can do it that way. Tip number five, the end of Ripple. If um, we have Ripple enabled and uh, I either insert or uh, into this area or move this, the clips to the right will move as well, or if I pull them in, they will follow. But uh, if I park anywhere in the timeline and uh, select Shift E on the keyboard, we get this uh, cyan color vertical line that looks like something's gone wrong with your graphics card but actually that's the indicator of ripple end so now whatever I do will end right at that line so pulling it back opens up a gap or pushing it in will create an edit at that same spot to turn it off hit shift E twice tip number six change the timeline numbers if you right click on the timeline ribbon there are several options to choose from uh, we can show sequence as frames. So everything now is expressed in frames, which is sometimes convenient if you're working on real short pieces or animation and things like that. So for example, your in and out and duration and the, the position, it, they're all expressed in frames. To go back, we uncheck this option. And while we're there, let's look at the other ones. Um, we have non-drop frame time code. We can switch to drop frame for the purposes of display only and uh, the timeline numbers go red to warn us that we're showing it as, as a drop frame frame but it's really not. The, uh, the timeline is still non-drop frame. And we can also choose to show audio samples. To go back, use the default format SIMT NTSC non-drop frame. Tip number seven, change the compression settings of your sequence. Even if you started working and even if you already have media that's captured or rendered, you can switch your compression settings in the sequence because Avid DS can mix and match media of different compression settings. And there are two places you can do this. You can click on Capture Settings and uh, in the video third over here, switch compression to, compression to either uncompressed or whatever uh, setting you need. Uh, this is a standard F sequence, so that's why we have JFIF uh, compression ratios. If we were in a high def sequence, then we would have uh, DNX HD settings. And if we were in a uh, 444 sequence, the only option available is uncompressed. So that's one place where you can change it. And the other, the other place you can change is sequence preferences, storage settings. It doesn't matter where you change it. So what happens when you change it, 
everything you capture from everything you capture from tape, everything you uh, import from files, or everything you render in Avid DS from that point on will assume these new compression settings. Tip number eight: selecting effects of the same kind. If you need to delete, let's say, all these DV effects from from your sequence, you can control click all of them one by one. So you know. If you have a long project, that's quite tedious. There's a better way to do that. Here under Customize Toolbars, choose Editing Command Category, and look for Select All Effects of Same Family. Click on it and drag it and drop it. You can do it in your uh, in any one of your toolbars. Um, you can place it here. You can even place it over here. If you change your mind, you can right-click on it and say Remove Item from Toolbar. Close the window, and I will select one of these DVs click on select all effects of same family and they're all selected hit delete and they're all gone or if you need to make modifications let's say um, we have to um, change the processing to 32 bits float just for these effects now I have globally changed all of my DV effects to 32 bit float tip number nine you can change the default style of interpolation for animated effects the uh, DS default value is uh, spline based animation so if I put a DV effect on this thing and auto keyframe is turned on make a keyframe here make a keyframe there and look at look at this graph in the animation editor it's a spline based move which e eases in and then eases out some people prefer linear moves so instead of having to go and change all these curves to linear each time we do this we can do it differently under user settings user preferences animation tab we can change the default interpolation to linear. Click on OK, apply the DVE, make a keyframe here, go to the end, keyframe there, and if you look at the motion graph, for this animation it's a linear move. Tip number 10, mapping freeze frame buttons on our toolbar up here. To freeze a frame in Avidius you can right click and uh, select uh, comparison buffer, grab, which will grab a frame, and then to turn it off you would go back and uncheck use compare buffer or, or check it back again if you need to see it again so it's kind of a pain to have to right click and, and fish this thing out of the menu uh, the better way to do this is to map corresponding keys up here on top of this toolbar so we can go to layout customize toolbars select command category DS viewer and click and grab on grab compare image and drop it up here and then do the same thing with use compare buffer here. Close this. So now what we have is I just click on this and I freeze the frame and I turn it off or turn it back on whenever I need it. 